Hi guys, welcome to Sons of Cain. On this video this week, we're going to do some close in work, and when I say close, I mean real close. So, what we'll do is a couple of drills and exercises, and then a couple of bits you can do just to give you an idea to expand your own system. Right, guys, we're going to do some actual close in work now, and we're going to do it against the wall. Normally, as you can see, I've got my tripod, I've got my two canes, one cane up in the air. For this bit, while I'm against the wall, I cannot use my canes. I'm, I'm quite stable, I've got a fairly wide grip based on me, I've got the ball for stability. Chris has got his hoodie on, so he's going to be the aggressor for today. First thing he's going to do, he's going to come in with the chest out, arms down, do you want some? So, worst position ever for him. I have a flick to the groin, or I can come up with the cane to the chin. From here, I can hit on, come to the collarbone, hit down. Really the worst position ever to come at me. The next one would be the one-handed grab for the punch, or the finger point he's getting. This is his blind side. He's looking at me, he's, he's threatening me. I can come over with the cane, Strike, bring my hand through, and he's away. From here, you're going into whatever attack or whatever sequence that is familiar to you or presents itself. I can come up with a cane, crook facing inwards, balance point. As soon as I pull down on here, his body weight's going to come to me, and it's a push pull with a hand. Where I'm hitting Chris, these are all knockout points. I'm not going to do it hard because obviously we need him for training next week. Another bad position is the double handed grab. This could be a choke, this could be anything. One of the first uh, techniques I actually learned was from Mark Shuey, and it comes over, it breaks, you push away and send to the dentist. Love that move. You've also got the half cane coming up, push and pull, away. If Chris just drops his right arm a second, just so you can see, we did a little bit last week on this, it's just pushing points. To get this attack coming in here, you're not going to get much in the way of uh, like force. But if you're resting against the sternum, and the sternum's two parts, a nice long breastbone, and there's a small little bone underneath, just above the solar plexus. So in the solar plexus, the ziffy sternum, or that little small bit of bone, or the top bone, and you do this, it's going to hurt. As a healthcare professional, uh, we used to get patients in with overdoses, and with your thumb, you do what they call a retro sternal notch rub. And if I do it gently with Chris, that was really, really gentle. And it's designed to get stimulus out of a patient that's overdosed on opiates. So you can imagine that just by doing that, it's going to have the same, the same effect and then you've got the strike up. These don't need to be um, massive forces going through. He's not going to expect that, that cane in there, he's not going to expect the tap or the chin. If he's coming with a double, with this cane, it's a black belt cane, and I've got nice little teeth. I'll just go to the back of the neck, slide and pull in at the same time, and it's just going to sort of gyrate against the spine, the cervical spine, and just bring him in. So these are little techniques you can use for what we call close-up fighting. It's not fighting at this distance, it's fighting at this distance. When I was able-bodied, I'd use Wing Chun in here because for me, that was just the martial art I, I, I was brought up on that I learned first. But with the canes, you've got these very small little tap-on, tap-offs. Um, if you're in the neck and you're just basically you're hitting any part there with the, with the horn, you can tap your own arm, just to bring it down, just to give that little, you know, jerk through. And it just delivers that nice bit of pain. So, what we've got, a couple of little training tips to practice this. Obviously, you don't want to be breaking somebody's sternum or collarbones or striking points. Unless you really want to. So, if Kev puts the pad, put it on his sternum. So, if I'm this distance away, and I bring this up, and just try and tap, so I hit me back on the wall. <laughs> yeah. So nothing from the cane. 
So if you imagine he's got his hand on me, I can't get a lot of power. If I just bring it up and, okay, you get, get the reaction that you're looking for. So just punching. It doesn't take a lot of force, but it is worth practicing as well. Same with here, I can punch the bottom, I can flick the groin. If it's this way up, again, if I'm in close, I could hook and pull down, but just hammer fist down on top, doesn't have to be hard. You can see the movement you get, and what you have to imagine is if that's digging in to these points, even bringing this one down across the sternum, as well as through the sternum. So these are just little practice things you can do, just to feel the difference between just pulling, and then as you're pulling, giving that little punch. Okay. What we're going to do now, using our trusty resistance band and our cane, just a couple of exercises to strengthen up the muscles you need to do those techniques. So first, up, first one we've carefully looked at was bringing it up. So nice and simple, hook the handles of the band into the crook of the cane, stand on the band and then you've got the action you need for that motion. And again, you can work this. Better to go slow and smooth. Rather than doing this rapid motion, get the technique right, strengthen the muscle, and that way you'll find the technique improves. So for the push, put your hand in both handles, other hand in the loop, bring it around your body, and then you can practice doing that pushing motion, and again, developing what you need to enhance that technique. If you can find somewhere to hook the band around, I have tried using door handles. However, I know that if I put on this one too much, it will come off. So if you're gonna do that, ensure you've got a really good strong anchor point, but then you can adapt the cane with the band to do these techniques. What we're gonna do now, is I'm gonna bring Kevin. So what we need to look at now is, as Kev's in his chair, how we can do this. So, for the first one, we want this upward motion. The best way i found to do this, if I feed this underneath the chair, Kev grabs it on the other side, making sure, so if he brings the handles together, hooks his thumbs in, both hands on, keep the elbows in nice and tight, which is the key. You don't want your elbows flaring out. Elbows in tight, and it's just lifting this straight up. And then holding it for a second if you can, bring it down. Don't forget to breathe. Elbows in, breathing out as it comes through. Okay. Now I've used a purple band here, which is the strongest band. So I would suggest using a, a lighter resistance band to start with as well. Okay. Again, you adapt it to suit the chair or the person that's going through. If you take it out from underneath, both handles in one hand. To wrap it around his body and then we can here and we've got this pushing forward again don't forget to breathe keep the elbows in focus on the technique okay okay do one more okay how are you finding that to do yeah I, again you feel the resistance maybe start off with a um, a lighter band to start with to get the range of motions. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's good. Yeah. So, this time I'm going to grab the cane, both handles on, and I'm going to make sure that these don't come off. I have had this happen, so what I do is I put my thumb through and grip the webbing so it doesn't slide off. I've had these slide off and um, I've had some interesting conversations. So what I'm going to do is bring this up and then with the sticky cane, just, and what we're doing, we're getting a change of force, one way than the other, and if we hold it, we've got a slightly different action. But as we did before, with the sticky cane, you're going one way, you're going the other way. So you're constantly rotating. Again, you have to control the cane, the band, and the direction. So, Kev tries that one. If you haven't got hold of the cane with the band secure, you'll find a completely different action coming through. It's harder. So we use that one for there. Yeah. 
So slide them both through. I would recommend, if you, especially when you're in a chair, to grip the handles. So he's got the thumb grip round, he's held on. That in itself is a difficult exercise, but you're building up the actions you need for the sticky cane routine. Yeah. Again, it's hard work. You're thinking about your arms are out full extension. At least I find you with this, you need a slightly shorter bag. Yeah. Because your tension starts here. You need the tension here, yep. so you bring the tension up. If you want to shorten the band because it's too long, loop it. You can just tie a knot in it, and that will shorten the band. I will say I've done this a few times. It does take a little bit of working to get it back out again, but it doesn't damage the band in any way, shape, or form. If you pick up one of these. Always remember to check it before you use it. So check that it's secured at the ends and just run your hand down, have a quick visual check, make sure there's no breaks, tears, anything which could cause damage. I've only ever had one snap and thankfully it was a light band. It did shoot between the guy's leg. I will admit I did laugh, but because it was a light band, it didn't cause any damage. So always give your equipment a quick visual check quick test before you actually use it. Thanks for watching guys, we hope you enjoyed this uh, video that we've made. Um, it is very close in work, um, we're not talking that your, your opponent's two feet away from you, um, you're not able to swing the cane, this could be against a wall, it could be in a phone box, it could be in a kitchen, a toilet, anywhere. And the idea of this video was just, just to show you that you don't need to swing the cane, you can use it in different ways to inflict a lot of pain in such a small area. Don't forget everybody's ability is different. You might be backed up against a wall, you might be stuck in a corridor. Later on we will be doing this blindfolded. Um, it might be dark or you might have a visually impaired student. So these are things that we'll be introducing as we go along. We're also going to look at a, a seated range where yes I'm in my chair um, but what about if you're actually sitting at the table? Uh, you're in a cinema, you're on a bus, you're on a train and you're seated and you get attacked. So we're going to look into this as well. Um, there's, a, there's a whole range of videos we're going to use Wing Chun, the cane, karate, as many different disciplines as we can think of. So don't forget guys, please write your comments down below, give us a thumbs up, a like. Don't forget, subscribe, ring the bell, free the fear.